Hello, my name is Mihne and I'm going to be the voice of the following project. The group members that made this short video possible are Ivonescu Georgia, me, Manu Mihne and Marculeșteanu Adrian. The goal of this project is to make a quick revision of the first half of our ITB courses. We're going to present you 16 exercises, two from each chapter. We will discuss them in the following order. First of all, Shannon and Informational Theory. We will continue with Fixed Point, Floating Point, BCD, CRC Code, Hamming Code, Boolean Algebra and finally some circuits. If you are a student watching this, I wish you the best of luck in your following tests and exams. After saying all of this, let's get started. We have the following experiment with six different outcomes. For the first requirement, we're going to have the following possibilities. To calculate the entropy, we're going to use the formula written below. After the computations, we can see we reach the result of 1.875. For B, we have to compute the maximum entropy. In this case, we know that all of our probabilities need to be equal, and because their sum is 1, each of them will be 1 over 6. We use the same formula to get the following result. For the last requirement, we have to compute the minimum entropy. In this case, one of our probabilities has to be 1, while the rest will obviously be 0. In this case, the entropy will be 0. First of all, we need to compute the total number of possible events. In this case, it will be 6 times 8 times 12. Because we need to compute the maximum entropy, each event will have the same probability. We apply the formula, but the result is pretty hard to compute, so we will just approximate to the nearest power of 2. In this case, that would be 512. Our first step is to write the decimal number 111 in binary. For this, we're going to decompose it in a sum of powers of 2. For direct code, we'll just add the sign bit, and in this case, it is going to be 0, because the number is positive. Because the sign bit is 0, that means we will have 0 changes for inverse code and complementary code. For our second number, we're going to do a similar decomposition. This time, we're going to have to pay attention to the fact that the initial number is only written on 6 bits, so we're going to complete with zeros until we reach the sign bit. The sign bit will be 1 in this case, denoting a negative number. Because it is a negative number, for inverse code we will reverse all the direct code bits with the exception of the sign bit. For the complementary code, we will copy from direct code everything until we reach a 1 starting from the right. After that, we will reverse all the bits with the exception of the sign bit as we did for inverse code. For the third number, we will have a similar situation as previously mentioned. The first step is to represent the numbers in inverse and complementary code. For addition in inverse code, we're just going to add bit by bit starting from the right, paying attention to the carry as we move on. When we reach the sign bit, we will have 0 and carry 1, and because this is inverse code, we will just add the carry to the least significant bit. We're going to repeat the addition and we're going to normalize the result. For complementary code, the addition will be done in the same manner, but we're going to ignore the carry of the sign bit. The first step is to transform our number from hexadecimal to binary. Because it is written on 32 bits, we can observe that it is written in floating point single precision. That means we will have 1 bit for sign, 8 for the characteristic, and 23 for the mantissa. We know that the characteristic is equal to the exponent plus 2 to the power of maximum characteristic bits minus 1 and everything minus 1. In this case, our characteristic is 131, which means our exponent will be 4. Because of the sign bit, we know that the number is negative, and we're going to shift the mantissa by 4 positions. To write our number in floating point, we first need to write it in binary. After that, we need to shift the comma to the left, such that we're left with only one 1 before it, and we can observe that the exponent is 5. We apply the formula for the characteristic. 
Because we need to write it in double precision, we need to have 64 total bits. One for the sign, 11 for the characteristic, and 52 for the mantissa. So we will place our bits accordingly. Now we can group the bits 4 by 4 to transform from binary to hexadecimal. The first step is to transform our numbers into decimal. After that, we can transform them into BCD by representing each figure on 4 bits. To make the addition, we have to add nibble by nibble starting from the right. Because we have a carry to the next nibble, we're going to have to add the correction factor 0110. Because after the computation in the second nibble we have a number greater than 9, we're going to add the correction factor again. To interpret our result, each nibble will represent a figure of the decimal number 407. We represent each decimal number into BCD. The subtraction is very similar to the addition, but this time we won't have a carry. Instead, we will have to borrow from another bit when we can't make the subtraction. In the first nibble, we borrowed a bit from another nibble, so we will have to subtract the correction factor. In the second one, we surpass 9, so we will have to subtract 0110 again. In the third nibble, we just made the computation. We can observe we use the correction factor two times and the result is 477. First, we need to represent the message and the generator as polynomials. We can observe that the highest power of x in the generator is 4. To create enough space for any potential future bits, we multiply our message with x to the power of 4 and start dividing our new message with the generator. After the computations, we can observe we are left with a rest. We'll use it to compute our transmitted message. The first step is to write the transmitted message and the generator as polynomials. To check if there were any errors during transmission, we have to divide the transmitted message by the generator. Because there is no rest left, it means that there were no errors during transmission. We first need to write our message in binary. After that, we need to add Hamming bits on positions equal to number that are powers of 2. To compute the value of each Hamming bit, we will do model 2 additions. For bit number 1, we take 1, skip 1 until we reach the end. For Hamming bit 2, we take 2, we skip 2 until we reach the end. For Hamming bit 4, we take 4, skip 4 until we reach the end. For Hamming bit 8, we take 8 and skip 8 until we reach the end. And for Hamming bit 16, we take the last two bits since they are the only ones left. Now we can rewrite T to get the transmitted message. We first need to mark out the Hamming bits in our message. We already know that we can find them on positions that represent powers of 2. To check if there were any errors during the transmission, we have to do similar to model 2 additions as before. Because the result is on 0, that means there was an error. We can find the error on the bit with the position 0, 1, 0, 0, or on the fourth bit. Now we can correct and find out what our initial message was. We rewrite the function so it is easier to solve the exercise. 
Between the first two terms, we can use BC as a common factor, and in the next two terms, we can use not B times not C. In each parenthesis, we will have 1 since the addition between a number and this complement is 1. We can use not B as a common factor. We can use the following property to simplify the parentheses. Next, we will just multiply not B with every element of the parentheses. To complete the k-map, we first need to draw the truth table. For this, we will compute each possible outcome and complete them in the last column. The elements that will have the result 1 will be our mean terms. We can now draw the k-map and complete it. Pay attention when making the k-map, because the Hamming distance between two consecutive elements has to be 1. We can now mark out the mean term 0, 2 and 5. We will group mean term 0 and 2, while mean term 5 will be alone. For each group, we will observe the elements that don't change, negate those with the values of 0, and complete them in our function. The first step is to draw the initial circuit. We will complete it with the names of each block, so it is easier to work with. We complete the output of each block. We will rewrite our function and use the Boolean algebra properties to simplify our initial circuit. The first thing we have to do is to draw the initial circuit and complete it with the names of each block so they are easier to recognize. We will also write the output of each block. Next, we will rewrite the function and use the Boolean algebra properties to simplify our initial circuit.